today uh, we will read from Radha Rasa Sudanidi, verse 108. All glories to the relishing couple. Wow. That is always engaged in many love plays, like playing ball and hide and seek, joking with each other in ever so lovely manner in the ever fresh blissful playgrounds of Rindavan, where groups of bumblebees are humming or humming. All glories to the relishing couple. That is always engaged in many love plays, like playing ball, hide and seek, joking with each other in ever, in ever so lovely manner. In the ever fresh, blissful playgrounds of Vrindavan, where groups of bubble bees are humming. All glories, all glories to Rasika Mituna. Rasika Mituna, relishing couple. That is always engaged in many love plays, like playing ball, hide and seek, joking with each other in ever so lovely manner, in ever fresh, blissful playgrounds of Brindavan. Their groups of bumblebees are human. Goranga Sundarji. Yes, Baba. We just have to we just have to off for one minute. Rebecca. Sorry. Just be at one second, we're back. Okay, no problem. I will, we will wait. So we are back. Can you hear us? Perfect, huh? But we cannot hear. Yes.
Please continue. Thank you very much. I will read again the words so that we can flow in the words of Prabhupada Saraswati. And this flow will bring us in the ocean of Radhika's qualities and the qualities also of her lover. <clears throat> but some echo is present. Now? Is it okay now? Yes, yes. Okay. All glories to relishing couple. Me also. Yes, Gurudev, now we are hearing you perfectly. We need your breath to hear. All glories to relishing couple. Rasika Mituna. That is always engaged in many love plays. Like playing ball. And hide and seek. Joking with each other in ever so lovely manner, in the ever fresh, blissful play of Vrindavan, where groups of bumblebees are humming. So we can see here from these words, how deep vision Prabhupada Saraswati has. Mm. And connection. And in com he's completely immersed in his kinkari form. And because of that, his eyes, his ears mm. are anointed with love, pure transcendental love. And because his eyes are anointed with this prema, but not ordinary prema, Mahabha. He can see Radha Mohan, Rasika Mituna, how they are relishing each other's love. He can see. How he can see? He can see their loving lilas. And he is mentioning here in the words, just two of them playing a ball and seek and hide. And he wants to show us that actually only someone who has eyes anointed with pure love can have can have such a transcendental visions. But he's not stopping here. He said also, I hear their joking words with each other. So his ears are also anointed with the pure love. And because his ears are anointed with the pure love, he can hear the sweet, joking words of Rasika Mitunam, relishing couple, Radha Mohan. 
he can hear all the sounds which are present in Lila. Because his heart is pure, and because of his heart, which is pure, his ears are pure, and he can hear the transcendental sound. And his eyes are also pure, and he can see these beautiful lilas and enter deeply in the meaning of lilas. Shortly to say, he can relish fully, to full capacity of his heart, he can relish this lila. And he's saying, Rasika Mituna, relishing couple, he is glorifying in the mood of Manjari. He is glorifying Radha and Mohan, their Rasik mood and exchange, because he can do it because he is Rasik devotee. And only someone who is himself is Rasik, is drowning in the ocean of Rasa, can glorify so beautifully, so sweetly, so attractively, Rasik Mito, relishing couple. Because he sees, he hears, and he is serving them. Who can serve? Now the question is arising. Who can serve Rasika Mituna? Only someone who is also Rasik. From bodily concept of life, with bodily concept, consciousness, it's not possible. For that reason, person needs mercy to receive spiritual identity. And by his meditation, deep meditation and mercy, this spiritual identity will grow, become more crystallized, like Guru Dev said, condense, and then devoted will identify himself with this real transcendental identity, real Bhava Deha. And what's going, what he is seeing also in these words, he is seeing Nikunjas. He is seeing Rasik plays for Rasik Lilas in Vrindavan. Rasika couple needs a proper place for exchange of their love. They cannot exchange love in every place. They need special place, pure place, in which every speck of dust, every grass, every bird, every person, movable or unmovable, is full of natural love, spontaneous love. This is the place when Radha and Mohan can play their charming games completely free. And this is possible only in Vrindavan. So Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati is celebrating and glorifying divine pair Radha Mohan, 
calling them Rasika Mitun, relishing couple, is the translation. Then they're go glo he's glorifying their sweet pastimes. Then he's glo glorifying his joking words. You know, and also loving manner, which they exchange during this exchange of loving jokes. Manner also is important. Manner, how we are doing something, is giving pleasure to the person to whom we love. So these manners, we have to practice also in the association of those who are already expert in these manners. And why they are expert in these manners? Because their heart is full of love. Love is giving them expertise in behavior, in manners, in words, in glances. Love is giving expertise for the seva. And then he's, Prabhupada Saraswati is mentioning here, their lovely manner, where in Nikunja of Vrindavana. This Nikunja of Vrindavana is also Rasik place for Rasik Lilas, for Rasik couple. This is only proper place for this kind of exchange of love. And he is glorifying also Nikunjas of Vrindavana. He is glorifying all Vrindavana because this is the center of most exalted transcendental love. And then he is also here one thing music. Music of bumblebees. He's hearing joking words of Radha Muha, but he is hearing the music, background of that music, like orchestra of bumblebees. Because the the bumblebees are also glorifying through their human through their music, singing, they are glorifying Rasika Mituna. They are glorifying place for their exchange, Vrindavan. They are glorifying pure love. Mahabhava Swarupini Rade Takurani. And they are also glorifying her lover. That's okay. He is here with her. So we can see here just from the one verse that all rasa which is present in Vrindavan, especially Madhurya rasa, is present in each word, in each syllable. And it and has the power to penetrate like a strong mantra in the hearts of those whose hearts are open for this kind of songs. Because uh, yes, Ropina. No, this um, go on. <clears throat> 
That's, you're hearing Guru Dev now, his, his breath in the background. Please, Guru Dev, we don't hear him. Uh, he's now in a in, uh, in sleeping position, but the mic is still connected to him. Oh. So ah. you wanted to hear his breath, no? So we just... <laughs> Thank you very much. This is the human... But <laughs> this is the sound of Rindavan. <laughs> but if if I if I may um, add something, Goranga Sundar, um, Nikunja Rindavan, when you were explaining so nicely about this, uh, how every sound, every leaf, every vibration of Rindavan you know, is always reminding us of the mitun, of the sweet couple. And I was just thinking the other day, I, I was walking in inside Vrindavan, the manifest Vrindavan. And here the bridge bus is called the roads of Vrindavan, the Nikunja gullies. The Nikunja roads of Vrindavan, the bridge buses themselves call every lane here in Vrindavan Nikunja gully. And they are very narrow, no? Very tiny, narrow, like almost like a maze. You cannot know where you are. And everywhere you hear the sound, everywhere you hear, hear Kirtan, no? And you, everyone feels the vibration of this city, of this town, is filled with the presence for Radha and Krishna, for the love. So I was just thinking, like, if we can experience this here, when we're walking consciously through the town of Vrindavan, how much we can experience when we really are there and really hearing, smelling and feeling everything. So this manifest Vrindavan can give us a small glimpse of the unmanifest pastimes. So I think we have to be very grateful like actually just that a place like Vrindavan, like this Vrindavan here on earth exists because here also still the plays are going on, right, Janandaji, yes. in the Nikunja Gullies? <coughs> yes. Oh. Maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Janandaji, can you explain us the difference between Aprakatani Vrindavan and Prakrata? Vrindavan, because Gopina just put this subject. Please, my dear, explain oh. to us. <laughs> we want to. Yeah. I'm not qualified to say this, these things, but uh, I would like to say glimpse. <clears throat> Here, uh, we have seen in Vrindavan, this is called the uh, Boma Brindavan or uh, I say, uh, Word. yeah, like uh, yeah, Asri Brindavan, also another Brindavan, like I uh, say, Goroka Brindavan or uh, say, uh, Aprakrita. yeah, Apri yeah. So, manifest Brindaban, unmanifest Brindaban, kind of a spiritual uh, Brindaban. And, <clears throat> and that spiritual Brindaban, of course, uh, if we realize it, it if, if we attain Swarupa City, then we can touch it. But unless we have uh, some little glimpse of ego, or some enjoyment tendency, then uh, yoga maya uh, cover it. So therefore, uh, in this material consciousness, we see in this Brindavan, but actually we don't see, we don't touch the other Brindavan. So, a few days ago, I was, I was reading Radha Sasdanidi. I forgot the bus. 
if we have a little bit tendency of enjoyment, then we cannot be abrajabasi. So it means, <laughs> brajabasi means someone who does not have tendency of enjoyment. In other words, brajabasi does not have ego or material consciousness. Because every brajabasi thinking, <laughs> <laughs> Krishna is like my son, my friend, or my lovers, etc. All Brajabasi is doing for the pleasure of Radha and Radha's Mohan. <clears throat> so, but uh, our tendency, especially like me, <laughs> you know, so we want to be enjoy myself, kind of self-consciousness. Also something judging consciousness. You know, find fault, try to find fault in, in, in other people. Also we have independent tendency. So this is all material consciousness. <clears throat> Then Gurudev, if we give up this, this tendency, the ego, then, so we offer this ego to, to Gurudev's lotus feet. This is, means Sharanagati. And then Gurudev, or Radha Mohan, open the door, of love, prema. In other, in other words, at that time we could see real Brindavan. So Narottama does also saying like this. And also, <clears throat> this, this Boma Brindavan, Krishna has Lila. Also in the spiritual world, Krishna does Nitya Lira. So eternally they are doing pastime. Sometimes Sadhu say this eight division of pastime. And actually this, this eight, eight divided eight time of the pastime. Actually in this Radha Rasa Sudanidi. So I'm really surprising how Prabodananda Saraswati or uh, Raghunath Das Goswami in Virapaksumanjari, they debuted, they show us Nitya Lira in Brindavan, in, in, in spiritual world. Because otherwise, we never touch it at the past time. Especially Raghunath Das Goswami revealed how to practice bhajan, how to practice this meditation, how should we serve the divine couple? Honestly, this is really amazing because very intimate pastime, really, Sadhu does not speak because this very, very intimate secret thing. For example, if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, if you have a wife or husband, can you reveal the intimate, you know, pastime to others? How did you pray last night? This can you reveal to others? 
No. Usually just keep secret. Even Guru Dev, I was surprising. Very, Guru Dev is very kind. Because usually he, he does not want to reveal the intimate thing of divine couple. What's the past time? What he saw? Sometimes he revealed to us. This is really amazing. Because he shows a way how to <laughs> practice, how Guru Dev is practicing. Especially I'm feeling how show the love to for for everybody. In Sadaka Deha and also Siddha Deha. Especially Guru Dev is stressing. Without Sadaka Deha or in Sadaka Deha, if we we did not show love and care, then in Siddha Deha we cannot do the seva. This is really amazing. And the Guru Dev story thing, you know, Guru Hasta Ashram is, is best for practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As an institution, nobody say like this. So this is uh, very amazing. <coughs> so, sorry, I, I say a little longer. What I want to say is only grace of Siddha Mahatma or Rashika Vaishnava. Huh? So, only by the mercy of Siddha Mahatma or Rashika Vaishnava, then we could do fear we could see, we could enter the divine pastime, divine couple's pastime. Otherwise, in this material consciousness, we cannot touch, we cannot enter. Even, I think Rupa Goswami is saying, without Raga Bhakti, Raga Bhakti is impossible to do without mercy of Rashika Vaishnava. So, sorry, I talk a lot. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you very much, Jahandaji. Yes, we have here opportunity to listen directly from the words of Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati and Ananta Das Babaji their realizations, what they saw and what they hear. And now in the commentary, Ananta Das Babaji is starting with Vrindavan, eternal Vrindavan, how it looks like and the pastimes in Vrindavan. What's going on in real reality? Springtime has come to sweet Vrindavan. And the sweet trees and vines are full of blooming flowers. All the moving and non-moving creatures of Vrindavan are shivering of ecstasy. 
when they are touched by the sweet fragrance of these flowers that are carried by soft Malayan breeze. Groups of sweetly human beings surround these clusters of flowers and cuckoos cause great amorous incitements with their sweet singing. Naturally beautiful Vrindavan arranges for perfection of all the Yugala's blissful vernal pastimes. And today, the Yugala is eagerly entering into the ocean of these pastimes. So we can see here how Baba expertly described the scene of Vrindavan, where the Lilas will start. And by meditating on this scene with sweet flowers, sweet trees, sweetness which is present in Vrindavana, devotee can prepare his heart for the lila. And I remember Prabhupada before he came in the West, he wanted to come in Japan. And he had a strategy to preach some specific points in Japan. He wanted to speak about 10th Kanto. I forgot the chapter, 20 and something, about Oatman in Vridavan. He even prepared the drawings, slide projection for his preaching in Japan. And I was always like this Prabhupada's approach because it was completely different when he came on the West. Because he knew the culture of Japan, he knew the time, the circumstances, the candidates, and he knew that the culture in Japan is that they appreciate the nature. They appreciate the flowers, they appreciate the cherries, they appreciate the mountains. Not like nice scenery, nice landscapes. They worship actually with their hearts. They appreciate very, very much the nature. So Prabhupada made this plan to go in Japan because he knew if I start to preach about the Vrindavan's natural landscapes, they will be attracted. I'm sorry that I just jump over this, but I always remember this and I liked Prabhupada so much because of that, because I understood this kind of intelligence can apply only someone who is not sectarian. And I loved him so much because of that. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I don't know, I'm not the one who can judge it. 
he couldn't went in Japan in that time. But we can learn how Prabhupada was immersed in tenth canto, autumn season, and all these beautiful descriptions in Bhagavatam, prepared, preparing the scene and heart and minds of the candidates for the lilas. And we can see here just in few lines how Anantadas Babaji also are describing in just few lines, describing this natural beauty of love which is present in Vridhavan. And this is why the reason is said in Vrindavan, every word is song and every step is dance. Because this is the expression of pure love. When someone is in pure love, deeply immersed, his words are songs. His movements are dancing, actually. And we have to be sensitive devotees to hear this, to see this, and to see this. To witness this. Is there someone who wants to share something? Otherwise, I will continue. Please. Okay. So the pastime between Yugalas is starting they throw a golden ball at each other and catch it. How sweetly Swamini's bangles are jingling when she throws the ball at Moha. Mohan is a chanted and is unable to catch the ball. So Swamini claps in her hands and exclaims, You are defeated. You are defeated, my dear. How sweet are her glances that resemble Cupid's arrows. You are defeated. You are defeated. Sweet words together with sweet glances. And Mohan doesn't have a chance then to faint. Mohan regains his consciousness and says, throw the ball again. If I cannot catch it now, then I will accept defeat. With wonderful gesture, Swamini throws the ball, showing the beauty of her sides and her breasts. Mohan is out of his mind when he sees and fails to the catch the ball again. Swamini laughs loudly, claps her hands and says again, you are defeated. You are defeated. Nagara loses himself in ecstasy when he sees Srimati's sweet laughing and sweet 
gestures and Swamini orders her maidservant to humiliate Mohan a little bit further. And I will stop here, just for the short. Because we can see here the loving manners of our Swamini. Her, her words, you are defeated, you are defeated, are very sweet. Her glances are also like arrows, sweet arrows to the heart of Mohan, but also her gestures. Shastras are saying vilasa. Different gestures of Radhika are so charming. That Mohan cannot resist. He has to be Mohan. A chanted. So we should know that in these small pastimes, very short pastimes, Many beautiful qualities of Radharani were expressed. They were expressed on her face, Lalita qualities, with her glances, with her words, and also with her movements. And where are the manjaris there? They are witnessing this sweet pastimes and they are relishing Rasika Mituna Lila. So Manjaris dressed Radhika and purposely put the bangles around her hands. And Radhika very expertly throw the ball by jingling <laughs> at the same time with these bangles. And this sound penetrate in the ears of Mohan, but also to the Manjaris. They became completely enchanted and proud on their swami. Pushpa in this moment, we can feel that she's throwing arrows. No Guranga Sundar. As you said, she's the ball is an arrow, her sidelong glances is an arrow, her movements, the jingling of the bells are all arrows she's throwing at Mohan. And he faints. He already faints when she's throwing a ball. Mm. She has not even started, not even the Nikunja Leela started and he's already down <laughs> and he's defeated already. So this is the power of Pushpa Banaya, of her Pushpa Banaya, poor Mohan, I have to say. And Goranga Sundar, you said so beautifully, I was thinking like, we are so fortunate that Manjuri is viewing and she is telling us, who is telling us, who is viewing that ball play, no? The manjuris. And as you said, who is preparing, who were put on the bangles, who made the who gave the ball to her, no, to throw it's all the manjuris, all the creep of the manjuris of Prabhupada and all the guru manjuris that we can, you know, they can tell us that this is happening and we can meditate on this. So I just wanted to Said <laughs> in a in a Baikunta or even Dwaraka, it is a Krishna is Ajit. Nobody conquer Krishna. And that Baikunta planet and even Dwaraka glorify Krishna like anything. Everybody glorify Krishna. 
you know, we also experience if somebody glorify us, sometimes we are disgust. But here, Swami says, you are defeated. You are not Ajita. What are you doing? And then Swami ordered to Manjari to humiliate Shama. Oh, you are a coward boy. You are always taking care of cow. <laughs> Therefore, your brain, like cow, how can you defeat our Swamini? You know, like this. So Manjari, you know, humiliated to Mohan. But that humiliation give pleasure to Mohan like anything. And you know, that kind of like a poison feed nectar. Like Mohan is, you know, so much ex feel ecstasy. And also Manjari could see both feeling Swamini and Mohan. This is Madhurasa. This is, you know, Amara's pastime. And Gopinata Bhai said, before entering Nikunja, Mohan is fainted. This is also amazing. Amazing also our Radha Dashi, Manjari, Kinkari. They could see, they could hear, you know, both words. They could see Swami's gesture, how bewildered as Mohan. This is also amazing. This pastime, Anandas Baba revealed to us. This also, we are so much indebted to this Rashka Vaishnavas. Now one thing came to me. Because of you, both of you. This bowl, golden bowl, is actually the heart which Radhika of Mahabhava is throwing to him <laughs> and how he can catch it. No way. <laughs> this is the, and throwing these golden bowls are actually throwing the love. And Manjaris know that. And they are also laughing. Daddy. So because I just said the the golden ball. Who is golden? Gorangi. You know, again a, a deep hidden meaning. Why the ball is golden? <laughs> this is also Mahaprabhu's Kripa. You know, again we have the link to Mahaprabhu here, who has shown us the Nikunja Lila, the Braja Lila. And, uh, you know, and, and Krishna could not catch, you know, he could not catch the golden uh, ball. So he had to steal the ball. <laughs> he had to steal the heart of Radharani and appear as Gauranga, Radharani. Always Gora Lila and Radha Krishna Lila are merging in each other. They are penetrating it, each other. And helping and nourishing each other, you know. Always. So the maid servant tells Mohan, Oh hey, why don't you go to herd the cows? What pleasure does a coward boy like you? Find in these games. Don't come here again to challenge my victorious mistress. This is a sharp words of Manjari. And only someone who is proud on her mistress 
and can be bold. And also who is proud to be a maidservant of such a mistress, can be bold. And say, no, no, say, say. In Chaitanya Chaitanya, it said, no, Radhika Dasi Yadi Ho Abhiman, Sikre Mile Gokul Khan. So means, I was just thinking, Gonga, when you were saying that in that moment when we are have the pride to be Dasi of Radharani, when we are proud of our mistress, you know, oh, she's my Devi, I am her, I am helping her to defeat this cowherd boy. Then if I'm Radha Dasi, then I can go to Gokul Khanna. Then I can go to Krishna and tell him, hey, coward boy, you know, what are you doing here? Then I can be very personal with this guy, you know. And this is, I think, the meaning of this verse. To, not that we want to attain Krishna. You know, this is not that we want that. But then we can, you know, we can talk like this to him. Because we are, our pride is to be Radhika Dasi, Yadi Ho Abhiman. And then we can, they say, attain Krishna, but not that we want to enjoy him. No, we can attain him in the, in the sense that we can talk to him and say, hey, get up now, you know, don't faint all the time. <laughs> so, Prema's uh, one symptom is uh, Premi Bhakta, control Krishna. So, similarly, Radhika could control Mohan and Radha Dasi, Radhika Dasi, also could control Mohan, Krishna. So, only Manjari or maybe some Saki could say like this. Yeah. Nobody can say like this. And even someone who has Aishwarya Baba, even little bit, he or she cannot say like this. This is Manjari's greatness. This uh, Gopinata Bhaya say, this Manjari's Abhima is actually highest. And this also giving by Goranga Mahaprabhu. And now I remember one thing. Actually, Dira Prakar. This is one of the qualities which some specific Manjaris have. They are very calm, they are very peaceful, they are very deep dira. But in the same time, they can be prakar, sharp. So what does it mean to be sharp? Here is an example. To whom to be sharp according to Radhika's desire? Not to other jivas, not to other persons to be sharp. Not. When the lila is like that, the Radhika order specific Manjari, now humiliate him more. <laughs> then Manjari is <laughs> putting out her second nature, Prakar. So. And just like an arrow. <laughs> wow. Also, Radhika's tendency is the Bamiya. Ah. Bamiya means a kind of, a, you know, kind of contrary, like a little bit, yeah, unsubmissive. Sometimes fighting, sometimes say, like uh, not submissive words, sometimes sharp words. This tendency of not only Radha Rani, sometimes Radha Dashi has, not, not every Radha Dashi has, but some Radha Dashi has that tendency. This, this, this uh, description in this by Anandas Babaji described, you know, uh, Goranga Sundara Pabu say, this, uh, what I say, this tendency, also this Bahamya tendency. This is an interesting part. Yes. I love you, my dears. <laughs> it's so beautiful, you know. 
I hope that Gurudev is sleeping very well. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, when Manjari finished, her strong words towards Mohan, Radhika is saying, Sundara, I cannot play this game with you. You would better practice a little more. Listen, I know another game. Immediately, another Lila is starting. Oh. You hide yourself and I will go and look for you. But if I hide, you won't be able to find me without the help of my Sakis and Manjaris. Mohan says, surely I will. Then Swamini is saying, Acha, then you hide first. In this way, they began the game of hide and seek. Mohana hides himself in a forest of dark tama trees. And it seems as if he merges with that forest. Srimati begins to search for him with the help of her maidservant. How cleverly Swamini ascertains Mohana's whereabouts. <coughs> Srimati says, if there is no honey oozing from the trees here, and the birds are not dizzy from ecstatic love, then I can understand that peacock feathered crowned Krishna, who steals the hearts of all three worlds, didn't enter this place. I will repeat again, because it's such a beautiful and clever approach in looking for Krishna Radhika is expressing. She entered in the forest of Tamil trees and she doesn't want to waste the time. And she's saying, if there is no honey oozing from trees here and the birds are not dizzy from ecstatic love, then I, I can understand that peacock feather crowned Krishna, who steals the hearts of all the three worlds, didn't enter this place. Then, when she goes to Tamil forest, again Srimati speculates. When the bees are so dizzy that they don't even drink the honey from the flowers anymore. When the bees are so dizzy that they don't even drink the honey from the flowers anymore. When the parrots are so stunned 
that they cannot eat the ripe pomegranates anymore. And when the those are so dizzy that they cannot eat the green grass anymore, then I understand that my master must have come through this way, walking like the best of the elephants. So this is the two comparisons. Radhika is approaching in this game and first is want to determine where Krishna is not. <clears throat> and then he she is speculating. <laughs> she is thinking where Krishna must be. And this external sound scenery of birds and bumblebees are showing Radhika where Krishna is for sure not, is hiding himself, and where Krishna for sure is. This is for relishing, actually, <laughs> for bhajan. This detail. Yes, Guru Dev. I like your voice. Swamini enters the Tamal forest and the maidservant follows her like the shadow. Swamini is totally bewildered when she sees the Tamal tree. She sees Krishna everywhere. This is the reason why, why one of the name of Radhika is Krishna Mai. She is full of Krishna. Her heart is full of Krishna, of her lover. And automatically, because of that, she sees him everywhere. <laughs> Srimati passes the Tamil tree without noticing Moha, who secretly laughs. Can I read it to say? This is, uh, I don't know, how, some weeks ago, you, Gora Gasundara, <laughs> you saying, uh, Prema Birasa Bibaruta means this symptom of Mahababa, very high, like Madanakya Mahababa. So, because Radhika see every, everywhere Krishna, also Radhika, Krishna Moha is but the Radhika has so much love and bewilderment she thinks Mohan is not here. So this is a kind of bivarta, spiritual, what is it, bewilderment, or maybe some illusion. This is like a high, highest, say, I, I might say, highest stage of prema. This is Goranga Sundara Prabhu mentioned, you know, in, I think, Chaitan Charita Murita or some other place, Prema Birasa Bibaruta. This is one, one example of this Prema Birasa Bibaruta. This I, I feel. It said Ramananda Roy, actually, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Chaitanya Charita Murita. And yesterday in our Croatian Zooms in the evening, we were talking about this again, Prema Vilasa Vivarta. Top, the peak of all Lilas. 
this kind of bewilderment and lilas with prema, which and the product of this prema, intense prema, intense pranaya is bewilderment. And this vivarta is coming during the Milan and also during the Viraha. Here is the example when Radhika is feeling Viraha from Krishna, like Jayanandaji very nicely noticed it, and she is bewildered out of Prema. And this is giving Kr Krishna such a beautiful pleasure, her bewilderment, that he secretly loves Baba is saying now, he secretly loves and gives a hint to the maid servant not to tell her. <laughs> because he wants to enjoy her bewilderment. Because in these bewilderments, Radhika manifests so beautiful expression on their, their face on her face, on her movements, that he wants to relish it. And very secretly he is laughing, but giving the sign to Manjaris, don't say anything, that I'm here. Please, Jain Anandaji. It's very beautiful, <laughs> Goranga Sundra Prabhu, is, it, this could uh, you know, explain very nicely. But still, Still, Krishna is watching Radhika's bewilderment. So Krishna could understand little, but Krishna is wondering what kind of love Radha has, what kind of taste she's enjoying for me. And I want to taste because I don't understand. I'm Krishna. I'm supposed to know everything. I'm Supreme Lord. Still, I don't understand this highest love. Uh, what to do? Uh, Completely Krishna is mad after, you know, this radical love. So, and they start thinking, oh, to taste this Radhika's love, I must steal her feeling. I have to steal her bodily color. I have to, I have to be that position, the, the sevaka for Krishna. So I should become Goranga Mahaprabhu. At that time, I may understand Radhika's love, Gopi's love, Manjari's love. Then I should distribute this love. This is Goranga Mahaprabhu's you know, appearance. This is this Goranga, uh, this Goranga Sundara Prabhu described this one, this also cause Krishna to be Goranga Mahaprabhu. Jaho, wow. deeper and deeper it's going. Yeah, I, uh, I, I will, I will steal Gopika's position because I cannot hold myself. But then I will hand over to Gopika. <laughs> when uh, Prema Vivarta Vilasa happens. As Guranga Sundar described and Janandaji explained now what happens is that both of them, they don't see each other anymore, right? Yes. So now Radha is walking through the Tamil forest and she's not seeing him. But who is seeing again the scene? Manjuris are seeing, they're seeing both. Now there's another Leela when Krishna Mohan is preparing the Kunja in the moon night. And Radhika is approaching and he's standing outside of the Kunja, trembling and shaking. You know, 
anxiously waiting for her to arrive and she's coming and then the moonlight shines on her and she completely merges with that light so he's not seeing her she's arriving she's standing next to him at the kunja and he's not seeing her he's not seeing her and then what happens manjari rupa manjari or tulsi manjari takes her hand and puts it in the hand of mohan there we see that this is without the manjaris they are lost and this is why mahaprabhu has generally said that mahaprabhu came to make this for us clear our position that what we can serve you know this is a great gift so they need the manjaris you know in this stage of prema vivarta vilasa they're hopeless both of them but now gopika also wanted to say something so <laughs> Radha, Radha, everyone is so much in ecstasy. I just wanted to share because it came very deeply when when you were reading so beautifully, Goranga Sundara, and it's a continuation of uh, of this beautiful flow. That actually we have to feel that everything is written here is is written in uh, in Parakya mood. So we are a little bit tricked because we are trying to look for Krishna. Through Radharani's, you know, through her feelings, but actually, if we turn it the other way around, so she's entering the Tamil forest, and what is it saying? It says the bees, they are not humming anymore, right? Anymore, anymore. They are Any filled. They are filled completely. The bees are not humming anymore because what is happening? Radharani is entering the forest. She sees Krishna everywhere, but the bumblebee of all, our Mohan, he is hiding behind one Tamil tree, and he is about to faint. <laughs> he is not humming anymore. He is one pointed in that moment. He is lost in her movement. And it says that the what was the next sentence? They are not anymore looking for the carrots are so stunned that they cannot eat ripe pomegranates anymore. So he is only meditating on Swamini's lips in that moment. He wants to taste that juice. And then the next is when the doughs are so dizzy that they cannot eat the green grass anymore. Yes, so all this is a meditation of that. It's that upcoming union. So our Swamini, for once, she has lost her vision. She sees Mohan everywhere. And for once, he is one-pointed. And he is, you know, he is about to faint. He's standing behind the Tamil tree. And her fragrance first comes. First comes her Swamini's fragrance. You can imagine how he is shaking. She's about to come. Then he maybe also sees her. So sometimes the Mahajan's words, they hide so many layers of beautiful hidden meanings. And so I was just, I wanted to immediately share because when you were reading this, this other meaning came to my heart. and. It's so beautiful, so I wanted to share. Thank you, thank you. This is Kripa. This is so nice when devotees are sharing. They're entering first, and then they are sharing. And then I will continue this, what Gopika was talking. Then Radhika is saying, I understand that, that my master have come this way walking like the best of elephants. This is the proof that he is completely intoxicated. <coughs> like the best of elephants. When elephant is walking, he is like a drunk, intoxicated. Especially young elephant, which is eager, 
to meet her mate, his mate. She's, the elephant is crazy. Ruining all around him. So, uh, Mohan secretly laughs and gives a hint to the maidservant not to tell Radhika. The maidservant relishes the sweetness of Mohana's smile. Swamini sees the bumblebee girls come from another side and fly directly towards Tamal tree, being attracted to Krishna's bodily scent. Swamini follows the bee girls and in this way catches Mohana saying, I got you, I got you, you are defeated, you are defeated. Now, the maidservant covers her mouth and giggles. We can see here different kinds of smilings. In the beginning, in the first game, Radhika was laughing very loudly. I defeat you, I defeat you. You couldn't catch the ball. And Krishna is smiling now, secretly, silently. And Manjaris are giggling. They are giggling because this is according to their nature. Manjaris are very sweet, childish. Some of them are more childish, some of them are less childish. And they are giggling. This is the kind of smile and laughing of Manjaris. Especially in this situation where Radha Mohan are exchanging their intimate love. They are not smiling and laughing, sorry, they are not laughing loudly. They are giggling, putting their hands over their mouths very shyly and very happy and very proudly. But they are giggling. And we, through the bhajan, we should hear this giggling, the drop of one of this giggle. At least, at least it's my desire. Oh, you are defeated, you are defeated. Radhika is telling now to Moha, now you must hide. And if I found you, no, sorry. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, Moha says, what do you mean defeated? Now you must hide. And if I found you, then we have a tied score equal. <laughs> if I cannot find you, then I accept defeat. Swamini is saying, Acha, sit down here. I will hide hide myself now. She hides herself completely. How? By standing between a number of golden statues that beautify a nearby Erbor Kunja. 
the statues become as beautiful as Srimati herself is because they are illuminated by her golden luster. And this is called Abhi Rupya. I will repeat this. The statues become as beautiful as Srimati herself as they are illuminated by her golden luster. Everything what's coming in the touch with Mahabhava becomes Mahabhava. Even golden statues are shining more gold light because they are absorbing Radhika's Mahabhava golden life. And what comes to me when I read this sentence, that these statues are receiving reflection of Radhika's heart and bodily color is that we sadakas needs to be illuminated with the hearts of someone whose hearts are already drowning in this golden heart we need that our hearts reflect Radhika's Bhava, Manjari Bhava, Vrindavan. And this can be done through the hearts of those who already has Vrindavan, who already are situated in Manjari Bhava, who already has Radhika in their hearts. Like a crystal, you, everyone knows this example of crystal which is absorbing whatever is around if the some red color is crystal automatically absorb this and becoming red so we need golden heart we need that our crystal absorb this reflection from the heart of our guru Dev, of all our Guru Parampara Acharyas. And we have to expose our heart. Like Jayanandaji said in, before, without false ego. For me, it's such a heavy task. But this is the process. And this means infusion. Infusion with the Bhava. We have fusion with the pure love, which has to come from someone who has a pure love. Sundar, can, can we then say that if whatever is touched by Mahabhav also becomes Mahabhav, you just said, so I was just then thinking, wondering that Krishna Mohan He's rasic shaker, no? He's rasa. But if he's touched so many times by bhava, what happens to him? He has to appear as Mahaprabhu, no? He gets so means Radhika's Mahabhava is even overwhelming Rasika Shaker. Is that the case then, Janandaji? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <coughs> But he's the supreme. How is this possible? That means Radhika is more supreme. Oh. oh. <laughs> Gopinata Bhaya finally <laughs> reached the conclusion. <laughs> Today, Gurudev telling us the, the, some, not a secret, some conclusion. 
エブリマントラ、イブマハマントラ、エメントフォーシュリマテラディカ。そう、ウィアチャンティングメニーマントラズ、エノ、ゴパラマントラ、カマガイトリ、イノメニーマントラ、オアメゴーランガ、エノ、マハパブズマントラ、マハパブガイトリ、Actually, this meant for Radhika. Because without Radhika, so Bhagavad Gita 10, 15, without his internal potency, we cannot understand Krishna. So without Radhika, we cannot understand Krishna fully. Or even without Radhika, Krishna cannot do anything. Without energy, what can we do? You know, without energy, I cannot hold this one, this, this mic. Without energy, Krishna cannot lift Govardhan Hill. Yes. <laughs> say, if, say, like a husband, like a Gopika Gopinata, Gopinata Baya, without Gopika, what Gopinata Baya can do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, this is sorry. This is maybe I'm a little bit transgress. t r a n s g r e s s We have also said all this. <laughs> you know, so without the energy of Lord, without Radhika, Krishna is say nobody.、Mm -hmm. So this Gopinata Baya reach conclusion, especially for us, our Manjari, or try to be Manjari, we are r e a l i s i n g this Radharani's you know, supremacy,、mm -hmm. or Radharani wins the game.、Mm -hmm. This Manjari was completely, you know, Uh, kind of r e l i s h i n g Also, Gopika did say one pointedness, one pointedness. So, sometimes I say, you know, but、uh, actually we have to see the vision of Radha Dasi. How Manjari f e e l Radhika's Emotional feeling, also Krishna's feeling or Krishna even smile. So, as a position of our Manjari, so we try to see and try to feel it. So, then I was thinking, always she's defeating him now, you know, like in every aspect, even in ball games, he's defeated, no? So, not very impressive. I have to say, no, I, I felt supreme personality of Godhead is all powerful. Nobody can touch him, defeat him. But look, s our Swamini is defeating him all the time, even in ball games and hide and seek also, I'm sure. So that's why he had to steal. No, he's a cheater. He's very naughty. So he had to steal her bhav. He had to steal her complexion, her mentality, emotion. So I was feeling, wow, because he's being so defeated by Mahabhava, Swarupini, Radharani, he came as Mahaprabhu also, no? He had to come in this form also because he has in the Braja and Nikunja Lila, he has not much chance against our so many. Sorry, just a. <laughs> and that defeatedness g i v e Krishna so much pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of, you know, this is also like a parakia. Yes. You know, externally Krishna defeated, but you know, that g i v e so much pleasure to Krishna. You know, we don't, you know, we cannot imagine how Krishna pleased by the, you know, by the service of Manjari and also Radhika's, you know, Radhika's、uh, win. This is also, we could say both things. Gopinaba is also right. Also, this defeatedness g i v e Krishna so much pleasure.、Mm, so. <coughs> We want to hear the more. So, 
just few lines. Maybe oh, please, Gorevani. I was inspired by, by Gopinath and, uh, of course, uh, Gauranga Sundara. He's telling so nice that actually I'm just flowing in some waves. So actually, what when, when Gopinath said that, or, uh, sorry, uh, Jayananda said also, that actually what Gopinath will do without Gopika. So I was also inspired. So all to bring this together, what actually is our Mohan without his energy? But what is the use if you have this full energy and you cannot behold it? You see, he cannot behold it. He cannot catch the ball. <laughs> He cannot behold it because his hand is so small. But who can behold it? Her full mercy and Mahabhav, who can behold it? Wow. The manjaris, they can. And that's because Radharani knows without her manjaris, she's lost in this, in this bath, in this mood because she gives up herself to, Sh to, to Mohan, to Sham in this forest. So she needs the help of her manjaris and she is fully aware. That's why she is telling with the help of her manjaris actually. But Sham thinks he doesn't need any help. He thinks <laughs> I'm the greatest. I will behold that. But as we can see, he's lost. Without the manjaris, he cannot behold. And he's standing, Radharani is standing in the line with the figures. Actually, we can also see it like, like gopis, you know. The gopis who are also have this Mahabhav from Radharani. Actually, the Mahabhav in the Gopis is also coming from Radharani. So we could see them also in the line like Gopis. He cannot even distinguish <laughs> without the help of the Manjuris. He will not find his beloved. So what a helpless situation, Gopinath, you are right. And this is God. with full confidence that he can find Radhika. Yeah. And that's why he has to take the position of Mahaprabhu. That's why he has to do it, because otherwise he will not be in the same situation like the Manjuris. He cannot behold the full Mahabhav. Wow. 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 Now this Dear is Gauravani. of Gauravani's words. Baba is Dear concluding Gauravani. like this. With full confidence, Mohana enters that kunja. But he cannot ascertain which form is Radhika's form. So he decides it to find out by touching each one of them. <laughs> when Mohana touches Radhika, she becomes stunned of ecstasy. So he continues his search without recognizing her. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Srimati smiles slightly and the maidservant relishes the sweetness of that smile. Wow. Mm. Finally, Mohana catches her with the help of her maidservant. <laughs> 
So Mohana is defeated because he was supposed to find her without the help of maid servant. And the bliss of the maid servant knows no <laughs> bounds. In this ecstatic state, the maid servant said, Glories to the pastimes of the relishing couple. Glories to the pastimes of Rasika Mituna. Ah. Wow. Rade, rade. Ah. Welcome, Gurudev. No, no. Ah. Rade, Full of minds. <laughs> we love you so much, Gurudev. Rade. Rade. So we. We finished the words 108 from Radha Rasa Sudhanidi. I'm sorry, devotees, I apologize for everything, all mistakes, all my arrogance. And you helped me so much with your beautiful sharings. I couldn't do it myself. And it's so beautiful to be in your association. Radha Radha, my dears. Love you. Radha Radha. Radha Radha.